So from our discussion of continuity so far, we know that g of x equals x to the one-fifth is continuous for all real values of x. And this is because functions of the form nth root of x are going to be continuous wherever they're defined. And here n is a positive integer. And they're going to be continuous wherever they're defined. And remember, odd roots are defined for all values of x, while even roots are defined for values of x greater than or equal to 0. In this case, we have an, uh, this is equivalent to x to the 1 over n. In this case, we have an odd root, so it's going to be defined, it's going to be continuous for all x, all real x. So continuous for all real x. We also know that h of x equals x squared is continuous for all real x. Because remember, this is a polynomial function with positive integer exponents. And that's the only type of polynomial function we've talked about before. But this is continuous for all real x as well. But what about, what about the function f of x? equals x to the two-fifths power. Well, this is, this is what? This is going to be x squared raised to the one-fifth power. But this is just what? We, we see h of x as the interior function. And it looks like we are applying g to it, right? So this is just g of h of x. What is the, where is this continuous? Well, it turns out that this is also continuous for all real values of x. So also continuous for all real x. So in general, a composition of functions, f of x, is equal to g of h of x, and sometimes you'll see see it written like this as well, is continuous wherever both of the following criteria are met. The inner function is continuous, so h of x has to be continuous at those points. But the outer function is continuous at the outputs of locations where the inner function is continuous. So let's say g of x is continuous for, for some points, and we plug those points in. So g of x is continuous for some some points and we evaluate g of x or sorry h of x is continuous at some points we evaluate h of x at those points and we plug those outputs that h of x spits out into g of x so those outputs from h of x are inputs into g of x and g of x is continuous at those outputs of h of x then we know that this composition is continuous at the inputs for h of x. And to word it a bit more mathematically, put it a little more mathematically, you can say in other words that if h of x is continuous at x equals a, and if g of x is continuous at x equals h of a. So g of x has to be continuous at h applied to those points a. Then the composition f of x equals g of h of x is continuous at x equals a. So we need to know that, that the inner function is continuous at a, and the outer function is continuous at h applied to where the inner function is continuous. If we know those two things, then we know the composition g of h of x is continuous at those points where the inner function is continuous.
So back to the example we were looking at, we were looking at f of x equals x to the two fifths. And we said that can be written as x squared to the one fifth. So h of x equals x squared. And g of x equals x to the one fifth. So we know h of x, no matter what value we input for x, h of x is going to be continuous everywhere. But we know h of x, it's x squared, it's only going to input values, or it's only going to output values between 0 and positive infinity inclusive of 0. So we, our next question we have to ask is that, is g of x continuous at these values outputted by h of x? Well, we know x to the one-fifth is continuous for all real numbers x. So it's certainly continuous for, for those spat out by h of x, right? It's certainly continuous over this interval 0 to positive infinity inclusive. So knowing both that, that, um, h of x is continuous for all values of x and g of x is continuous for for values spat out by h of x where h of x is continuous we can say that this composition is continuous for all values of x because it's continuous for all values where h of x is continuous so let's look at an example here Show that we want to show that f of x equals x plus 5 divided by x squared plus 2x plus 2 all raised to the 4 thirds power is continuous for all values of x. So first we will look at this inner function here. We have the polynomial, we have the rational function x plus 5 over x squared plus 2x plus 2. And we know that rational functions are continuous wherever they are defined. And where are they going to be defined? They're going to be defined wherever the denominator is not zero. So if we, if we look at this denominator here, x squared plus 2x plus 2, we can complete the square. And we can write this as x plus 1, the quantity squared, plus 1. So looking at this, this is the parabola with a vertex negative 1 1 and it's going to open upward so this is a parabola here with with the vertex here it's going to open upward so we know it's never going to it's never going to cross the x axis so this will always be positive so it'll never equal 0 right so this denominator will never equal zero. This rational function is going to be continuous for all x. Continuous for all values of x. Then we have to ask ourselves, okay, if, oops, if this is continuous for all values of x, then what about what about this outer? We'll, we'll call this h of x equals. This? Now what about this outer function g of x? equals x to the four thirds. It needs to be continuous for all values like outputted by this function. Well this is going to be continuous for all x, right? Because in from our previous example this this is going to be it's going to be the function x to the fourth raised to the one-third power. This is a polynomial function. We know it's continuous. It outputs values that, that are, it's going to output positive values, right? Because it's an even root, or it's an even power. And we have this, this uh, cube root function here. The cube root function is going to be continuous for all values of x. It is an odd root. So it's certainly going to be continuous for those values outputted by this function, outputted by uh, x to the fourth. So now we know that g of x equals x to the fourth is continuous for all values of x. 
if it's continuous for all values of x, it's certainly continuous for all those values outputted by this function h of x. So, so we know that given, given any a, given any a, we know that h of x is continuous at a, at x equals a, right, because it's h of x is continuous for all x, and g of x is continuous at x equals h of a. So because we know those two things, I can say thus we know g of h of x is continuous for any any value x equals a and g of h of x is is none other than this composition here so we know that this is continuous for all x.